Hey everybody, this is Rick, also known as Duke City Devil Dog. Today is the 10th of February, 2020, and I am in Amarillo, Texas. So, let me explain to you what's been going on the last couple days. Uh, stay tuned. Hey everybody, um, like I said, I'm in Amarillo, Texas. When I talked to you yesterday, I, uh, I mentioned I was running out here in Amarillo. Uh, got a load to uh, Affiliated Foods. Got it there in time, which is good because there was a big fine if I didn't. But I got, got it there in time. Um, few things that, uh, if you watched uh, yesterday's video, if you noticed, it sort of ended a little bit abruptly, uh, and that was just because um, I was trying to show off my new my new toy, my new camera. I've got a new forward-facing camera that uh, that I can uh, start uh, via voice, and it's going to show where I've got it mounted. Will show that sort of front look uh, uh, going over the you know looking straight ahead, um, and so you can sort of see where I'm going, what I'm sort of seeing as far as that. Um, and, and I just think it's a nice, uh, it's a nice little, uh, little, uh, tool to give us a little bit of a different look, uh, and some different content. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Uh, but I just, uh, was playing with it, trying to just, uh, use my voice to get it started. And so I, I recorded like three minutes of video yesterday with it that uh, I included at the end of that or the second part of yesterday's video. And then because I, by the time I got uh, uh, here and got everything, you know, uh, dealt with the load and everything like that, it was a long run, so I didn't record the last part to that video. But uh, but uh, let me know what you think, and uh, as we go, you know, let me know what uh, what uh, sort of things you're interested in. Uh, one good thing about that camera, it's it's pretty small, it's pretty lightweight. Uh, I, I'm going to play with where I'm going to mount it. I may mount it over my right shoulder on occasion. And uh, that way you can sort of see, you know, from behind me a little bit in that way and, and look out that. I don't know. But uh, just let me know uh, what you think. And we'll go from there. Well, I started recording this video for today at a different place. And uh, and I don't think I'm going to use that... that uh, video that I that I filmed um, because I'm a little disappointed and I'll explain it here in a second um, I uh, I went uh, I, I'm at the pilot here in in Amarillo off of I-40 uh, toward the eastern part of Amarillo and um, let me tell you first of all I did get a call from from DFW Dispatch, which uh, uh, that's uh, one of our, our, our main dispatch uh, counters at uh, at Stevens. Uh, they were the one that gave me the load. They come up here. And they're trying to route a load up to Henderson, Colorado. They call me to see if whether I can do a repower to get it up to Henderson. It has to be there by 8 a.m. Now, normally it wouldn't be a problem. It's only about 350, 360 miles, about six, seven hours, something more. I could leave here, you know, 10, 11 o'clock and get it there normally. And uh, the problem is, is that the weather really has, is concerning to me. Uh, it's been wet all the way from down here in, uh, in Texas, all the way up through Colorado, up through the panhandle of Texas and the panhandle of Oklahoma, and that's right where it'd have to go up. Not only has it been wet, wet's not a bad is not a bad thing, but it's been cold. And by cold I mean it's been below freezing the entire time and that wind's sort of howling a little bit. Um, that does not make for good driving conditions, especially at night where you can't see the you know the road very well. Everything looks sort of black, everything looks a little slick kind of thing like that. So um, so initially I told them I would do it and because um, they called me and I had been sleeping um, 
and then I went and checked the weather and checked the roads and everything. And I called my DM and talked to him a little bit about it, talked to Jonathan. Uh, and he gave me some good advice. He said, let me talk to them and figure out what's up. I said, you know, I don't want to take this, especially it was a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a extremely important that it gets there on time. I don't want to take this and not, and then decide I'm going to shut down or feel like I'm pressured that not to shut down and, and because of weather and because of roads. So, so, uh, they ended up not, uh, not giving me that load and that's fine. That's fine. It was only 300 some miles. They were going to put a hundred dollars on it as well, an extra hundred, but, uh, but it, it, it's just not worth it for me. Not in that case. So I'm here for the night and that's good. That's fine. I'll watch a little TV, relax a little bit. Um, but, uh, I am about half a mile from a place that I've seen over and over again, uh, the Big Texan Steak Ranch. That's what it's called, the Big Texan Steak Ranch. If you have dri driven through I-40 anywhere in the Southwest or even probably the Midwest, you've seen these these billboards for the, for the Big Texan. Uh, and that's that 72 ounce free steak with a little asterisk that you can't read because you're going 65, 75 miles an hour down the road and you can't read the fine print. But basically what it is is, is if you can eat a 72 ounce steak, uh, it's there's a six piece uh, uh, shrimp cocktail, a salad, a roll, and one or two sides. All that. If, you, if you can eat all that in an hour, in 60 minutes, then you get it for free. And you get your name on the board and you get a shirt and all this stuff like that. But if you don't, it costs you 72 bucks. And you got to pay the 72 bucks up front before you can do it. And then they refund you if you make it. Well, back in the day, it may be something I would try. Not anymore. But steaks supposedly were really good. And I'd never been there, so I went to go check it out. So I filmed a little intro kind of thing. I may put it just uh, just so you can just sort of see part of it in, the, in one of the corners over here. Um, but, uh, but the reason why I'm not keeping it is because I'm not, I wasn't overly happy with, uh, with that visit. Now it's an institution. I mean, it's been there for almost 60 years. This is the 60th year. I mean, it opened in 1960 and, and, and it, it's, it, you know, the, the food's not too bad, but, um, you know, and, and, and I'll show you a couple pictures. I'll post them, you know, around this, you know, on the screen here. Um, I ordered a, uh, um, some cheese sticks, which were okay. Uh, they weren't cooked, you know, so that the cheese was nice and soft. Like I usually like cheese sticks kind of stuff. Um, those were sort of undercooked a little bit. They weren't bad. They just were, to me, they were a little undercooked. Like I said, I like when, when you bite into a cheese stick and, uh, you know, a fried cheese stick and the, and the cheese almost wants to run and you got to sort of play that game, you know, where, where, where's it going to tear apart? That wasn't this. Um, uh, but they were okay. They were, they were pretty good. Um, they make their own ranch dressing, their own dressings there, their own steak sauce and everything. And their ranch was pretty good with it. Um, I had a Caesar salad. Uh, that was that was okay. They their their Caesar dressing needs a little bit of a kick to it. It doesn't. It's it uh, it's got a very mayo-y taste to it. Um, and there um, and then I had the uh, a uh, bit loaded baked potato, except for the chives. And and initially I thought that they had forgot to give me bacon bacon bits or whatever, but it was all mixed together with the with uh, the cheese, they give you the che cheese in a cup and sour cream that they make themselves there as well, and everything. And that was pretty good. The sour cream was pretty good, and and the, and uh, the baking bits of chin and the potato was pretty good. Well, and then I struggle every time I go to a steak place. It's the same struggle for me. Do I get a ribeye or do I get prime rib? Back and forth. I mean, I've always loved prime rib with with horseradish and stuff. Uh, but you know, you go to a steak place. Sometimes you're like, you know, the the, the steak place has got to be, you know, let me get a get a steak, you know, a regular steak. So in this case, I decided to go with the with the ribeye, uh, 20, 24 ounce ribeye, about the thirty bucks for it. Okay, um, 
and it came and again I'll show you a picture of it it came and it it, it looked it looked good it looked good um, when I first and, and I like my steak I usually order it either medium or medium rare in this case I ordered a medium um, I used to order medium rare all the time because that's the way my mom always used to order still has her, her steaks and everything and that's the only way that you know we knew how to order it build her a medium rare and and over time you know medium rares become a little bit more rare um, than I like so I usually go medium which still has that pink in the middle a nice pink it's just not a runny pink you know what I mean it's a warm pink um, uh, so the first couple uh, pieces that I got out of this were, were a little overdone but that said um, you could see the the flames back there you know sort of flying back where they were cooking because you can see where they cook and uh, and it was like the gristle on the outside of the steak so that part I could understand you know maybe a little bit you know a little bit overdone right there on the outside and as I got towards the middle it got back it got to to, to a good medium um, and that, that was good and that was fine but then as I got to the end it started getting overcooked again and dry and uh, and to the point where if you've ever had a really dry steak um, it uh, it you get that like dry kind of stuff on your tongue feeling you know that uh, and you're chewing and chewing and chewing and that's not what I like with the steak and so I didn't even finish the steak um, and I told my, my waitress she was very nice I, uh, uh, I wish I could remember her name I'll probably put it right here on the on the video uh, I've got the receipt so it's on there so she said she was going to talk to James who was a, a manager about it and let him know so um, makes me want, wish I would have got the prime rib um, but uh, one of the things that I choose even though I like 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 um, horseradish with my prime rib my sort of go-to whether a steak is really is really good that I get at a, at a at a restaurant is whether or not I need to use steak sauce. If I if I don't need to use steak sauce, it, that means the the steak is just great. I mean it's it's the perfect amount of juiciness. It's it's good, good texture, everything like that. It's got good flavor to it, everything. But if I need some steak sauce, uh, there's something there. Well, in this case, I asked for steak sauce before. I knew I was going to need it, and the only reason I did is because they make their own steak sauce too, and I thought I would at least try it, you know, to taste it. But even the steak sauce that they had was a little runny and and and, and didn't have a ton of flavor to it. But um, the the last part was just really dry. Well, um, James was really nice. He uh, he uh, only charged me for basically what I ate, what I could eat. So he took about 20, 25% off the bill, actually. He took almost, uh, yeah, um, roughly a, a, about 25, 25, 30% off of the, the, the steak. And, uh, and we were talking and I told him, you know, exactly what, and that was before he came to talk to me, he, he had her take that off. And then he came to apologize and everything. And I told him, you know, hey, you know, I, um, you know, I understand and, and that kind of stuff. I explained it to him. And he said, well, is there anything I can do? He said, can I get you something else to take with you? And I was like, you know, I could use something sweet to get this sort of, you know, flavor off of there. And he gave me a big old piece of, of carrot cake. Um, I didn't eat it there. I brought it here back to the truck. I'm going to take a picture of it because it looks really good. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, so, uh, so thanks, James. And thank you to my waitress. I, again, I wish I remembered your name. But I'll put it, you know, on, on the video here. Um, and I'll even probably put a little picture of the, the, the carrot cake because it, it, it's really pretty good. It's one of those really tall ones. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but then they add sort of insult to injury. So I walked over there because it was about three quarters of a mile. You know, I try to walk. Um, the, you know, that's how I try to get my exercise. I try to walk as much as I can to different places or whatever. And, and you know, I've, I've said it, I've walked here and there and, and all over. But uh, I walked over there. And um, when I told James that, you know, that I, I had to get back over here to pilot, he, he said, well, you know, it's starting to rain out there. Um, 
they have a free shuttle. They have actually a free limo service. So if you ever do want to go there, I mean, like I said, the food is not bad, and the, and the burgers looks pretty good. The steaks all look pretty good. Mine was just overdone. It just was just one of those things, um, you know. Um, but you can call from hotels or whatever around this town or, or truck stops, and they'll supposedly they'll send a limo to pick you up, and then they'll bring you back after free of charge. Well, I didn't take the limo over there because I wanted to walk a little bit. But since it was raining, and James said, "Well, go outside and wait, and the, the limo will come and, and they'll take you back to the to the, the place." So I waited and waited, and the limo didn't show up. And I asked them inside, and they said, "Yeah, the limo should should be around, whatever." Still didn't show up. So I called the number that they that they tell you to call for the limo if you're going over there. And I said, "Hey, I'm waiting out here. When's the limo coming, whatever?" And the guy says, "Well, we're not running the limos tonight because of the weather that's coming in." And I said, really? I said, that's probably the time where you need to run the limo the most. Well, yeah, we're just worried about, you know, the weather. And he says, but uh, but we do have uh, we do have cabs. We can send you a cab. I said, yeah, but that's going to cost me. How much is that going to cost me? Well, I don't really know, he tells me. So it's too, it's too the weather's too bad for them to run the, to run the limo, the free, the free service. But it's okay to run the paid service. They're, they're good with that one. So that was a little... That, that bugged me a little bit too and, and, and I'm going to mention it in the review because I'm going to do a review um, on uh, Google probably for uh, of, the, of them of the big Texan but uh, I think it's a service that they contract out because um, I, I just have a feeling it's it's a service that they contract out but so that they know because that was just a little little funky there but uh, but anyway so um so that was my day at the Big Texan to check it out. Um, like I said, it's something that you, you know, that you see all the time and everything. You gotta go check it out. Um, they have a display that shows the size of that that steak that you that you'd have to eat and all the sides and everything. And it's 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 pretty massive. I just I I, I wouldn't even if I could do it, it wouldn't be fun. It just wouldn't be fun to do. Um, you know. Um, you wouldn't enjoy it. You wouldn't enjoy the steak, you know, and to pay 72 bucks for that or, you know, or the chance of paying 72 bucks for it in case you don't get it done. It's just not, you're not going to enjoy it. So, but you know, it's, it's something for people to do and try and it's, you get a lot of good publicity out of it. They have a stage right there, uh, right in front of where they cook the steaks. I mean, it's a, it's a stage with a, with a special table up there and all above it, they have, like six different 60 minute clocks over there so that you, everybody can see the countdown kind of thing and uh, some people have done it in 10 minutes or less uh, so but you have an hour to do it if you want to go check it out go check it out um, like I said it's not a bad place to stop I, I, they do have I guess they do make their own microbrews there of course I'm not drinking I, you know I, I can't drive this truck and be drinking so but uh you know, and so I didn't even really look at what they had, but they do have that. So I mean, if you if you're here in town and you're you're staying in a hotel, you're not driving a truck or whatever. Um, you know, the free free limo service if you can get it back and forth, plus the microbrews and stuff, it may be a, a good way to go. Spend uh, go with some buddies or go with a, you know somebody and go enjoy. So, but that was my big Texan uh, uh, thing today. And uh, and it was okay. Like I said, it was okay. Uh, but uh, but I, I was a little disappointed. So uh, so that's why I'm not gonna gonna be uh, posting all that video that I, that I you know I only filmed maybe six seven minutes of video over there. And uh, and uh, so I'm not I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that and and uh, find you know save my save my. Uh, my upload time for something that, that uh, people really enjoy. So, um, should be headed home or headed to Albuquerque in the next in the next uh, week or so. Uh, talking to Jonathan, probably get a load out of here, going either to the um, hopefully to the west coast, and then something that's going to head back the other way, and then try to get repowered off of it somewhere around around Albuquerque. So, um, so I could spend my, my three, I think I had three days, maybe four days off and, uh, and see, um, see my two daughters and, and see some friends and stuff like that. 
um, still stay in the truck, but, uh, but, uh, get a chance to do that. That'll be fun. So that's it. Um, I did, I have had some people who are looking to get into trucking ask me about recruiters. Um, I will try to remember. I do have the name for a contact, uh, the name and phone number for a contact for you guys. Um, I will put it in the description below um, for who you can call. Uh, uh, that uh, She was the person who, uh, who worked with me a little bit towards the end uh, of uh, that recruiting process. But I'll, I'll, I'll list it in the description below and you can feel free to contact her. Make sure you let her know that, 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 uh, that you got the info from me. I, I don't believe that there, that there's any kind of referral stuff. So that's not what I'm really looking for, but I do want them to know that I sent you there. Um, again, I've really appreciated the people who have gotten a hold of me or when I've seen you at a school or, or even a few people on the yard now who, um, who just are getting with Stevens who said, Hey, your, your videos are, are one of the reasons I chose to come to Stevens. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate the feedback. So that's it. You guys have a great rest of the night. Stay warm if you're somewhere where it's cold. Um, and, uh, and enjoy. Uh, this is Rick also known as Duke city double dog. I am in Amarillo, Texas driving for Stevens transport and I'm psyched. You guys have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later.